Now let's look at the next very important con concept, which is common multiples. So multiples, as we already know, we can write them down very simply. They are the numbers as they appear in the uh, table of other numbers. So for example, to write the multiple of 12, I simply replicate the table of 12. So it will go as 12 ones are 12, 12 to the 24, 12 is a 36 and so on. Similarly, to write down the multiple of 9, all I have to do is I have to just replicate the table of 9, 9 was a 9, 9 to the 18, so on and so forth. Very, very simple. So concept of multiple itself is very, very simple. To get to the common multiples, all I have to do is to notice that when I look at the multiples of 12 and the multiples of 9, certain multiples, they appear in both as both multiples of 12 as, as well as 9. So certain numbers would appear in both and these numbers are known as the common multiples. The first such number in case of 12 and 9 is 36. So I write that down. The next number of course is 72 and after that 108. Of course the common multiples do not really end there and I can come up with infinite such uh, common multiples between 12 and 9. The important thing to note is the very first multiple common between 12 and 9 is 36 and that is known as least common multiple because it is the least common multiple <laughs> very very simple between 12 and 9 other multiples are simply the tables of this least common multiple which means that other multiples other common multiples between 12 and 9 are just multiples of 36 so for example 72 is 36 into 2 108 is 36 into 3 so on and so forth the next important thing to note or to really understand here, of course, we already saw that 36 is just known as LCM or the least common multiple. Another thing which I want to bring across, the point I want to bring across is to understand why this works. Why do we have the common multiples where we have them? So let's look at the factorization of 12. Let's just factorize 12 as 4 into 3. I can do that. There is no problem in that. In that. 9 I can factorize it 3 into 3. If you notice the factor which is missing from 12 but is but which is present in 9 is 3. So I bring it here. The factor which is present in 12 but which is missing in 9 I bring it here. Okay. And if I multiply this number this comes out to be 36. And of course, this number comes out to be 36. Now, how do we produce these missing factors? So, produce the missing factor in case of 9, what do we do? We take 4 jumps of 9. So, 9, 4 was the missing factor. And if we take 4 jumps of 9, I have produced that missing factor in case of 9. So, every 4th jump, I would get a factor which is common to 12 as well in case of 9. Similarly, to produce this number 3, how do I do that? I take 3 jumps in case of 12 and every third jump, 1, 2 and 3, I would come across a multiple of 12 which is common to 9 as well. A very, very simple concept. Now, let's move on to the other side of the facet and understand how we can calculate LCM. Again, we'll discuss two methods of calculating the LCM. We'll be considering these three numbers. And the first method is, of course, by prime factorization. What we do is that as we did in the case of SCF, we write down the numbers in terms of their prime factors. So it is very simple. This becomes 2, 3, 7. And then for 105, the prime factors are of course 5 3 and 7 okay so this this prime factorization again is not very difficult you can do it yourself the all the uh, involved factors are very very small okay so you start by dividing the least number and then uh, for example you, you can start by 5 in this case okay, because you know that 5 would be a factor and then uh, continue the process the numbers would then become small okay once you do one division so these are the prime factorization we have done this uh, for each of the numbers now in case of lcm again we start the starting process is similar to scf we start by looking at the numbers uh, 
the factors which are common the prime factors which are common to all three numbers so the first the factor which is common to all three numbers is 7 so we simply write that down okay so 7 would come in our lcm as well okay that is the starting point after that so this was similar to what we did for scf we looked at the factor which was common across all three after that the similarity ends and i want you to note this so that you are not confused we then pick up the factor which is common to two numbers so pick we pick up five as well okay so we don't start stop just stop at seven as we would in the case of scf but we move on to the next factor which is common across two numbers then three is also common across two numbers so we'll take that as well okay so this was common across all three five and three were common across two numbers and then finally we even take these this two and this seven are also taken which have been left okay so these two and seven are present in only one uh, one of the uh, numbers but we even take this so we don't leave out uh, any of the factors we are first taking the factor which is present in all three numbers just once then we take the factor which is present in any two numbers again just once we took five ones and three ones and then we took the factors which have been left which were there only in one one of the numbers and this would be our lcm so that is the difference key difference is that we are continuing the process of taking the factors until we have extracted each and every factor of each number right so that is the thing to note here for example if you consider 42 all its factors are present here 2 3 7 are all present here then if you consider 105 all its factors are also present 5 3 7 so 5 3 and 7 are present here 245 577 7, so 5 okay 7 and another 7 okay so they are also present so ultimately what would happen is that this lcm would be divisible by each of these numbers which is correct only right because that is a least common multiple it is a multiple of all the three numbers so it has to be divisible by these three numbers and the process of choosing the prime factors actually ensures that okay so that was the key thing here uh, now let us look at the next method of doing the same lcm and this is little bit systematic and this is our preferred method so we would use this method wherever possible again we start by uh, looking at the numbers and we write them in the tabular form then the first thing we do is that we see that the two of the numbers would of course be divisible by 5 so we start by dividing the numbers by 5 so 42 is not divisible so it comes as is okay so notice this is the difference again with the scf scf we would only choose a number here if it divided all three numbers in lcm that is not the case we would choose a number here which divides at least two numbers so this 5 would divide at least 105 and 245 so we are using 5 here then we come on to 105 this becomes 21 and then 245 49 then from here we know that all of these numbers are divisible by 7 so we, we write that down so this becomes 6 this is 3 and this is 7 7 is 49 and from here again we would use another number which is 3 okay because 3 would divide 6 as well as 3 so we choose 3 okay so it divides at least at least two numbers so that's why we are choosing 3 3 2 are 6 3 1 are 3 and 7 would come here so our lcm would again come out to be 5 into 7 into 3 so we go like this and then 2 and 7 again if you notice this 2 and 7 are actually the factors which were completely left which were not common to any of the numbers so the process is very simple very system if you proceed it uh, systematically then it, the process would complete very uh, very very you can complete it easily notice that we have we could include a factor two times okay so seven was what was there in case of 245 twice okay so we had to include seven twice in our lcm as well otherwise the number this lcm would not be divisible by 245 and that would of course be incorrect now let's move on uh, let's first look at the uh, summary of this process what we did we are including the factors which are common to at least two numbers so that's what we did first then whatever was left whatever factors were left in each of the numbers we included those as well so that was the process of completing the lcm finding the lcm of a number very very simple okay again we again if we 
uh, if multiple times the factor has to be included we do that as well now with that let us look at the properties of the lcm see it is the smallest number divisible by all the numbers we understand that okay just by the process as we see just by the process of finding the lcm we have included the factors the prime factors of each of the numbers in our lcm so the lcm would have to be divisible by each of the numbers by necessary that is necessary because of the process and by definition also it is always greater than or equal to given number so for example if you consider these two numbers 6 and 12 the lcm of these numbers would be 12 this 12 is greater than or equal to so this 12 is greater than 6 and it is equal to 12 so this for this special case where the two numbers are multiples of each other we have to put the equal to sign so it is greater than or equal to given numbers scf in this case would have been 6 6 was the highest common factor now if we are taking two co prime numbers okay of course by definition prime numbers are co prime so for example we took two co prime numbers 9 and 4 our lcm is simply the product of these two co-prime numbers and why is that the case again very very simple right lcm has to include all the factors of 9 as well as 4 all the factors of 9 means 3 and 3 all the factors of 4 means 2 and 2 since there are no common factors between 9 and 4 we have to ultimately include all the factors of 9 and all include all the factors of 4 okay because the two numbers are co-prime there are no common factors so we had to include all the factors of 9 which is 3 into 3 and all the factors of 4 and this is nothing but 9 into 4 or just the product of the two uh, co-prime numbers all the prime numbers are co-prime therefore the same applies to uh, prime numbers as well so for example the lcm of 2 and 3 would simply be 2 into 3 which is 6 okay so this is this is lcm of uh, 2 and 3 okay note that now with that we have covered all the properties all the important properties of the uh, LCM now let's see what kind of word problems are typical word problems how are they structured for the case of LCM so for the SCF we already saw how the word problems were for the case of LCM the word problem typically go like this suppose we are given two scales okay so two scales or two measuring tapes one of them the length is 6 for the other the length is 9 we will be asked to create the smallest wall which would be evenly divisible or evenly measurable by these two tapes so that is how the typical uh, problem of lcm would go in the case of scf we had to create the scale the largest possible length of the scale so largest was the keyword there here smallest minimum that is the keyword minimum possible length of the wall which is evenly measurable by these two tapes so for example if we create if we take a, a wall of length 12 and we take the scale of length 6 we can possibly evenly measure it evenly measurement means that there is only fixed length full lengths of scales would uh, fit inside that wall of course when i want to measure the same wall of length 12 using a scale of 9 i cannot okay because the scale of 9 would be would be covered only half okay i measure one full length of scale and then rest i will have to measure uh, using half the uh, using a part of the width of the scale which is of course not allowed we have to create the smallest length of the wall this length should be such that it is evenly measurable by this one as well as this one so six and nine both both these scales should be able to measure it six centimeter as well as nine centimeter completely evenly okay so 12 is not that number so our number should be such that it is completely divisible by each of the 6 and 9 and what is that number it, it should be smallest such number which is completely divisible by 6 and 9 and that number is of course the lcm now we know that lcm of 6 and 9 is 18 we can find it out and this would be the smallest wall which is evenly measurable by 6 as well as evenly measurable by 9 and that is by definition because this lcm this number 18 is the smallest number which is divisible by both 6 and 8 right so that is the uh, sorry 6 and 9 so that is by definition okay so this 18 is divisible by both 6 and 9 so that is by definition this 18 would be evenly measurable by both these scales okay the key here is that smallest wall it is the smallest such wall so smallest minimum those are the keywords that we have to look for in a question lowest smallest minimum 
those are the keywords we have to look at in, in the question to find out that this is the word problem for LCM. Now let's take the example of such problem. We'll start with very simple problem. We have to find out the smallest three digit number which is exactly divisible by 6, 8 and 12. Most important thing here is that we have to find the smallest such number but it has to be three digit. Let's just find out the smallest number first. We know that the smallest number divisible by all three of these numbers is simply the LCM of these three numbers. That is something we know. So LCM of 6, 8 and 12 we can find it out and this comes out to be 24. So we'll use our method, the division method and we'll find out the LCM of these three numbers and it will come out to be 24. But that is not the trick here. 24 is not the three digit number. The key thing here as we studied when we looked at the properties of multiples and LCM at that time what we saw was that not only 24 but, but all the multiples of 24 are divisible by 6, 8 and 12. Okay, so if we consider all the multiples of 24, so the next multiple of 24 is 48. After that, 24 into 2 is 48. 24 into 3 is, if you look at the next multiple, it is 72. Then the next multiple comes out to be 96. And after that, the next multiple comes out to be 120. So these are all the multiples of 24. So 24 is of course the LCM. So that is the lowest possible number which is divisible by 6, 8 and 12. But we are not being asked the lowest possible number. We are being asked the smallest possible three digit number. So we have to continue with this multiple of multiples of 24 ultimately reaching the three digit number. So all of these numbers, all of these multiples of 24 would also be divisible by 6, 8 and 12. And note that these are the only numbers, all the multiples of 24 are the only numbers which would be divisible by all of these three. So we don't stop at 24 the LCM, we find out the multiple of 24, the smallest multiple of 24 which is the three digit number and that comes out to be 120. So 120 would be answered here. Okay. Keyword is three digit number. Okay. We, don't, we are not only looking for the smallest number, but the smallest three digit number. So problem is of course of LCM, but we have to do a little more work. The next thing, next problem is that we have to find out the least number which when divided by 6, 15 and 18. Okay. So it does not evenly divide these numbers. What uh, it, it is not evenly divided by these numbers. Number which is completely divisible by 6, 15 and 18 is of course the LCM. We know that. So let's just find out the LCM of 6, 15 and 18. Okay, so that, that part is simple. We can quickly find that out and the, that number is 90. So that part is simple. That is the LCM of these three numbers. But we are not being asked for a number which is divisible by all three. If that was the case, 90 would have been answered. But we have to find the number which leaves a remainder of 5 when divided by each of these numbers. So think about this a little. 90 when divided by each of these numbers 6, 15 and 18, what, what is the remainder that 90 would leave? Of course because it is evenly divisible, the remainder would be 0. What about if we divide this 90, what about instead of 90 we did 90 plus 1 and we divided it by 6. So in that case, you would say that 90 is completely divisible. So Till 90, we would just compute uh, the uh, the division division would be complete, but this one would be left extra, okay, for each of these numbers, and that one would be the remainder. What about 92? 92 when divided by let's say 15, so 15 six are 90, but two would be left as remainder. So when 92 would be divided by each of these numbers, then my remainder would be two. So to get the remainder of 5, what do I have to do? My number would be simply the LCM which is completely divisible by these numbers plus I have to add 5 to it. So this extra 5 would be reflected in the remainder as well. So this number comes out to be 95 and 95 is divided by each of these numbers. This 5 which we added to the LCM just reflects as the remainder. So that is again the key trick in this question. Now let's move on to the very next question. This is similar to what we saw in case of scale. There are three boys and there step length okay so again in this case we are looking at the step length so it is 63 the for the second boy the step length is 70 and for the third person the step length is let's just write it down as 77 
So instead of scale or tape, we are using the step length. But still, the problem is the same. We have to find out the distance they have to cover, the smallest possible distance that they need to cover so that they have taken an even number of steps. Okay, They have taken uh, uh, no half steps. Okay, Only full, they can cover this distance in full steps. So how do we do that? The distance, whatever this is, has to be divisible by each of these numbers. And what is that number? That is, of course, the LCM. So our answer in this case is simply the LCM of 60, 70 and 77. And of course, you can calculate this using the uh, long division method. Okay, That is the preferred method. Let's just do it just once for one question so that you get an idea of how to go about doing it. 60, 70 and then 77. Okay, so 63, 17, 77, we write this down. And the first number that we divide is, of course, 7. So this comes out to be 7 and 63, then 10, and then 11. Now, since 11 is, there is no common factor between 11, 9, and 10. Okay, so even with two pairs of number, I cannot find any common factors. So therefore, I stop the process right here. So the LC, LCM just comes out to be 7 into 9 into 10 into 11, which of course comes out to be 6930. So you can compute it. And this 6930, this distance of 6930 is evenly divisible by each of this step length, which means that they would take a fixed number of complete steps to cover. Each of them will take complete steps to cover this distance. So again, very, very simple, not difficult at all, provided we are solving the problems systematically.